Hello Zero K fans and welcome to this exhibition match. I am ShadowFury33 bringing you a match between Sackdoth and Blitztank on Titan Duel. So let us begin. Now, Titan Duel, we saw this match map on last well, Saturday actually, there's a 3v3 we saw. But this is 1v1 this time around and we're seeing Blitztank in the northwest side of the map against Sackdoth in the southeast side of the map. Now I want to point out something because I was actually playing with a newer player the other day and that newer player was playing with too many defenses. Now, it's a really common problem, or really common mistake that players make. However, Sactoth, just to point out, Sactoth has a tendency to go for defenses, but watch how he goes for defenses throughout this game. Now, I'm not sure how much he's going to go for defenses here. He is playing light vehicles, and commonly light vehicles will use slashers in place of laser turrets or defenders. But he is using scorchers initially. Doesn't have any slashers queued up now, so... Watch how he builds defenses, because that's basically how you build defenses in 0k. Like, the positioning, the amount, the type, how he does it, that's basically how it's done. Now, Blitzing, on the other hand, I'm not quite as familiar. He is actually building a sensible amount of defenses as well, building just one Lotus near these two metal extractors in his factory. He does have this Mason unprotected, but on this map, it's not as big of a deal. Mason is building another laser tower. This is also a good setup, though a little, possibly a little excessive. Blitz Tank's commander is essentially the beam laser, a walking lotus himself, or itself. So this commander acts like this lotus. That me means that only this lotus is really necessary, but I could see this one being a bit more useful in about two minutes' time. Now Sacktoth, on the other hand, actually isn't really going for defenses right off the bat. He is, in fact, going more for just plain scorchers. And going for quite a powerful raid as well. Blitztank going for a single Scorcher instead of the five that Sactoth is sending in. Sactoth is really committed to this Scorcher harassment. So this is probably not a good game for watching the way Sactoth builds defenses. Unless you just want to say, do it the way he does it. Build none! Because a lot of people would actually say that. But 0k, no, you want to build a couple defenses here and there. You do have some defenseless units like workers, with the exception of welders. Or constructors, I should say. With the exception of welders, have no means of defending themselves other than building defense turrets. But yeah, the way that Blitz Tank right now actually is probably better modeled right now for the absolute maximum you want to build defenses. He's pretty much building the absolute maximum you want to build. As you can see, five Scorchers will... They get through... Only one Scorcher is lost in that fight. And actually, Sackdoth doing a pretty good job getting rid of a lot of the Metal Extractors here, doing a very powerful harassment on Blitz Tank. At the same time, he is continuing to expand himself, continuing to get more Scorchers, and this harassment doing a great job getting rid of the other laser turret, though, unfortunately... The Scorchers getting in each other's way just a little bit, but even then, he got rid of all the defenses in this base. Or, well, okay, another one got built just now. Another Lotus got built. But he still got a lot of, rid of a lot of defenses in this base for basically basically an even trade on cost. Unfortunately, this, this Scorcher getting in the way of the laser turret, and the Leveler finishes it off, and the other Scorcher trying to get to this Mason. It should be able to finish it off if it gets close enough, but it's a really tricky thing to do. Scorchers bit of a gimmick with the Scorcher weapon is they deal more damage the closer you are to an opponent. Which is a really important thing to keep in mind because opponents are more likely to be farther away. They're going to try to kite out of the way and also the automatic skirmish AI is going to force the units kind of away. Because the thing is, is that the units will automatically try to avoid taking hits more than they'll try to be dealing damage. Which means with the Scorchers, you have to be kind of careful. Make sure that you're pushing them towards your opponent so that they actually deal the damage they need to. And Sackdoth sending in more Scorchers, but unfortunately, these are getting lost. These are not clumping up. These aren't dealing with the laser turrets effectively. And unfortunately, we're then one of the laser turrets does go down, but at the cost of, well, two Scorchers, one of them able to just barely limp away. And all this time, as you can see, Blitz Tank is actually expanding quite a lot. And he does have a slightly weaker economy at this point. But he also has more map control. Granted, it's pretty much a quarter split each way, but Sackdoth, less area on the map, probably not as big of a deal, but Blitz Tank is definitely pushing himself forward. It's a slow push. It has a lot of defense turrets. Like I said, this is pretty much the max, actually slightly more than I would recommend, but it's not quite too much. It's, it's not totally detrimental, but it is definitely something you want to do carefully. You still want to make sure you are building units. He is building quite a few units. He is teching up, well, teching up as it were. He's getting more expensive units as he gets more resources. Getting a caretaker as well. A little bit, with 16 metals, caretaker might be a little early. He's not 
getting a metal in. He's not getting a glut of metal right now. He's still running low. The reclaim, I could see as a bit of a justification for the caretaker, but right now I would recommend just reclaiming with one constructor and using this constructor to help build up that factory. And Sacktoth, on the other hand, is not going... And actually... Whoops. Right. Sorry about that. I actually hit the volume button. But anyway, Sacktoth, one of the spectators pointing out that Sacktoth is surprisingly not building light laser turrets in 1v1 because he always does. And actually, he is starting to build some in the front lines, but he wasn't building any further in back. Like I say, he was focusing entirely on raiding instead. And on the other hand, Blitztank is focusing a lot on this, as we've seen throughout this game. And it's starting to pay off, actually. I mean, he does have a lot of nice protected reclaim fields. And even though he doesn't quite have resources to make this caretaker work all the time, he does have the reclaim available to make it work most of the time. Just because his commander's taking 10 metal, this constructor's taking another 5 metal, the factory's taking 10, the caretaker's taking 10, and he only has 25 metal income when he is spending 35 metal. So it's not worth it. If you're not if you're spending all metal and then some, you're not getting any additional build power. And Blitztank is trying to come in to where Sactoth has some defenses, and Sactoth has a really nice little setup on here. As you see, the Light Desert Tower, the Lotus is right behind the Solar Collector, meaning the Scorcher can't get to it until it's essentially gone all the way through the Lotus range. Very clever that, and he has that here as well. So make note of that, anyone who's watching who likes their defenses. Putting your defenses in, and this is a great example of how to do this, actually. Putting your defenses around power plants like that is a great way to keep them defended and allow them to be more effective. At the same time, Sactoth is going around the side of the map raiding the naked areas that Blitztank has not bothered to defend. Though Blitztank definitely going for this strong front line. Both players really are going for a strong front line here. And as you can see, Blitztank, his laser towers are a bit more naked than Sactoth's are. Sactoth definitely have a much... Well, let's see, a much better defended posture, and it is starting to pay off. Leveler here is will be able to take care of the lasers, though immediately Lotuses aren't exactly meant to deal with levelers on their own. And as you can see, Bliss Tank is able to get a raid down in the back. Like I said, Sactoth had not built any defenses until just now. That Lotus there just being built, and as you can see, Bliss Tank is Bliss Tank and Sactoth having defense wars. That that is not a common thing to see in high level one v ones, but. Sactoth has won them nonetheless. Still, you don't normally see that. Normally, that's a question of sending more vehicles, or sending more units there. However, playing vehicles... Actually, not even a matter of playing vehicles. Neither player seems to have a lot of units on the field. So I'm not terribly surprised, but we will fairly shortly, within the next two minutes, we will see a lot of vehicles be produ produced. Although Sactoth does not have anything other... He's getting a Mason. He's probably going to use that Mason to get a Caretaker. And he... Or at least use the mason to assist with the factory. Or maybe not. No, he's going for a tons, tons and tons of masons. This particular mason is just going forward. To Why is that mason going forward? Does he have... Oh, I see. He's got the rally point up there, and the masons need to be controlled. Sactoth not heading back... To okay, now he's heading back to deal with this. Right now, he is dealing with his base completely. While Blitz Tank, on the other hand, focused much more on... Well, just... As you can see, Blitz Tank does have a great deal of map control. He is trying to make sure that he knows what's going on and knows where Sactoth is setting himself up. Now, let's double check. Blitz Tank does have radar around basically half the map. Sactoth, on the other hand, has radar across about half the map as well, but it's not quite so useful. There's a lot less he's seeing that Blitz Tank has. Blitz Tank knows about the entire front line going on, though Blitz Tank isn't doing a great job dealing with all that. Sactoth has a very... Well, very defensive setup, but Blitz Tank, it doesn't matter if he's dealing with the front line, because he is going around the side and just avoiding the Maginot line of defense turrets that Sactoth has set up, and going straight for the heart of his base. Now, even with that, there still is some defense turrets being set up, but these Ravagers are going to be able to take that out no problem. I mean, they have more than enough firepower and health to be able to deal with that without issue. And Sactoth needs to be sending in some of his own forces, but he's been primarily building masons. He's been focusing entirely on getting his economy going, and that... I think it's a bit too heavy of a risk for him to take. Blitztank going for a gunship switch. Interesting choice. Not a bad idea. Banshees are fairly powerful, but given that he's doing just fine with the Ravagers, I'm guessing this is just to close it off a little bit faster, seeing as Sactoth has no anti-air setup right now, other than the plethora of defenders over here. But in his main base, he's got no anti-air, so the Banshees would be fairly effective. And 
now Ravagers, and this is what I was talking about, now the Masons are being used to assist the factory. Sackdoth, however, lost a lot of metal income in the process. Blitztank now has double his metal income. I think Blitztank has this game pretty much as a result. And the Banshees are already being used for harassment. More Banshees streaming in. Primarily the resources are being spent on new vehicles, but the Banshees are still quite useful. Once the defenses go down especially, once the defenders in particular go down especially. And Sackdoth going for an air switch, but he only has 19 metal. That's with reclaim. He only has about 13 metal without. And this is a bit of a risk. These Banshees are going to their deaths. The Ravagers not pairing up with them, and that is going to finish them. Thankfully one of them, well, thankfully for Blitz Tank, one of them is getting out of the way. And another one getting it. Why is that Banshee going in the way? Is that gunship plant? That must be set on a rally point. Yes, it's set on a rally point, but not that close. That's really bizarre. But as you can see, Blitz Tank, he was focusing most of his money into vehicles, and that has paid off. As we can see, over a dozen, or almost a dozen Ravagers going into Sackdoth's base. Probably over a dozen if you count the ones coming out of his base right now. And Sackdoth's commander with his air factory. Air factory is just finished. Getting some Avengers to deal with the Banshees, but still at this point. Blitztank has the ground, Sackdoth's trying to take the air, but Blitztank could probably pretty easily get some anti-air going, and a Hacksaw, okay, Hacksaw is unusual in 1v1, I, I'm gonna look up Blitztank's play history, because I think he might be a team player, but it doesn't matter, Sackdoth realizing he's lost map control, and has thrown in the towel, a little bit of a shocking finish, but that was the game, so I hope you enjoyed that, and I will have another one for you shortly, so stay tuned.